You know, his career in hockey has been more in focus in recent months because of various uh, documentaries and print articles about his career, especially uh, in relation to one of the worst on-ice incidents in NHL history, which almost killed him. But Henry Boucher, uh, what a what a tremendous talent, a, uh, a proud First Nation person. We're all proud in Canada and across the U.S. and the world that he represented our people very strong in everything he did. So today we're going to be talking about the good and the bad, and unfortunately the ugly of his career. But my God, ladies and gentlemen, what a what a talented player! Now he was drafted in the second round, 16 overall, the in the 1971 NHL uh, amateur draft or entry draft, coming off a big campaign with Team USA in the 71 season. Now he also crossed over to defense, but in that uh, campaign in 71. After playing in the Minnesota uh, system of War Road in 69 and Winnipeg of the WCHL in 1970, the right-headed uh, shot center had 57 uh, points in 49 games. Now, a multi-sport athlete, uh, he played uh, football, baseball, and tennis at uh, War Road High. Now, uh, first made it to the NHL in 1972 in a game against Detroit, February 22nd. And uh, played all the way till the first couple of weeks of the 1976-77 season, retiring in January 77. Now he wore uh, the famous number 16 for Detroit and Kansas City, Colorado, and of course the number nine with his hometown uh, squad in Minnesota. Now he played on the War Road High School team that lost to Edina in the 69 Minnesota High School State Tournament Finals, which drew a lot of interest with scouts. Unfortunately, he was injured during the game, which War Road lost 5-4 in overtime. Now, he played on Team USA as an 18-year-old at the 1970 IIHF World Championship B Tournament in Romania after taking part in six pre-tournament games with the squad. Uh, a very mobile forward, similar kind of like a Steve Shutt with a little bit of uh, kind of a Cole Caulfield style. Very good around the net, very, very good on the stick handle. Now, at that uh, tournament, he was the only player under 20 to make the team. Now, he scored four goals and added one assist in seven games for the U.S. team that went 7 0 to win the 70 Pool B title tournament and advanced to Group A for the following year's tournament and, of course, towards the 72 uh, Olympics. Now, he played on Team USA as a 19-year-old at the 71 Worlds in Bern. He had seven goals and added one assist in 10 games for Team USA, who finished a promising six. His seven goals tied for the Team USA lead. Now, he also played left and right wing uh, during his career. He was a number one overall pick by the Minnesota Fighting Saints in the 72 general player draft. He scored a goal against Hall of Famer Jacques Plante in his first NHL game for Detroit on February 22, 72 versus Toronto, and his counter came at 9.47 of the second period to spark a five-goal comeback from a 4 nothing deficit. He was Detroit's Rookie of the Year for 73. He also set an NHL record six since broken by scoring six seconds in Detroit's January 28, 73 contest at Montreal. The, the marker scored against Wayne Thomas, broke the previous record of seven seconds, set by Charlie Conacher on February 6, 32. He also played in the first Colorado Rockies team after the franchise that became the New Jersey Devils, relocated from Kansas City to Denver, and he also appeared in the team's first contest as the Rockies on October 5th, 76 for Toronto. Now, he's ranked as the fifth greatest player in Minnesota high school hockey history by the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Uh, that list came out in 2011. Now, at age 20, where he got uh, the majority of his media coverage of that era, he was a key player in the 72 U.S. Olympic team that shocked the hockey world by winning silver in Sapporo. Boucher, who had been to the Worlds twice as a teenager, had two goals and six points in six contests for the Americans at the Olympics. In all the games he played for Team USA in 72, Boucher was the team's leading scorer with 91 points. Many scouts noted that despite his age, he was the best player on the entire team. Boucher came home to more good news. Again, he got his uh, contract with Detroit to play in the NHL. He also got his official release <coughs> from the U.S. Army so he could enter the NHL. Now, in the 1970s, Boucher's impact on Aboriginal hockey is cannot be measured. He had a huge impact 
not only on that, but the U.S. hockey scene, first by winning silver at the 72 Olympics, and then by making a big splash in the NHL. Boucher's talent was undeniable, but the thing most fans will remember about him, apart from his involvement in the unfortunate Dave Forbes case, is the fact he wore a headband on the ice. At the time when few NHL players wore, hel- uh, wore helmets and hair often flowed across the rinks, Boucher kept his own hair in place with a basketball-style headband. Prior to Boucher, no NHL player had ever been wearing such a headband in games. Uh, later, Buffalo's Rick Dudley would uh, soon follow, but Boucher was the original headband wearer. Although he wore a helmet during the Olympics and his brief NHL stint in 1972, he began wearing the headband during his first full season with Detroit in 72-73. Boucher had grown his hair long, which was a problem because he kept getting in his eyes and causing problems with his contact lenses. Now, the headband was suggested to him by a friend, and Boucher was also an avid tennis player, and uh, athletes like Bjorn Borg were making headbands popular in tennis at the time. He also became something of a national sensation uh, when he appeared on back-to-back U.S. national Sunday afternoon TV broadcasts. In the TV game on January 28, 73, again, he scored the NHL record uh, six-second goal in the victory at Montreal. The headband would become his trademark, and he wore a variety of colors and styles through his NHL career. Now, Boucher was a rarity for other reasons, too. He was an American playing in the NHL that was also, almost entirely made of Canadians. Not only that, he was a full-blooded Ojibwe Chippewa Native American. His ethnicity only seemed to add to his legend. In fact, Boucher was said to have worn a headband to draw attention to himself so that young Native players who would see that one of their own had reached the NHL. Unfortunately, in the sign of the era, the rest of the hockey world wasn't terribly diverse, and engaged did something that will almost surely be considered offensive in 2024. Whenever Boucher took the ice in Detroit or many other U.S. cities, the arena music directors will play Indian war chants in an effort to draw humorous attention to Boucher solely because of his ethnicity. In the years after his retirement, Boucher had worked tirelessly to encourage diversity in hockey as a member of the NHL's Diversity Task Force and in the countless speeches he gave to discuss his own story and the opportunities available to others who come from non-traditional hockey uh, backgrounds. Now, a nickname, of course, the Chief. Other post uh, war uh, draft teams include War Road of the CCHL, Team USA, Virginia of the AHL, and Minnesota WHA. He also attended the University of Detroit. Now, when he moved to Seattle after retirement, he worked as a travel agent. He later returned to War Road and went into real estate business, joining Palin Realty in 87. He later moved to Anchorage, where he worked as a techno- for a technology-, technology company, and then moved back to War Road in 2011 to found Boucher Films, a company whose documentaries chronicle the lives of Native American Olympians. Now, he is also the first cousin once removed of talented NHL player T.J. Oshie, and T.J. Oshie's father, Tim, is Boucher's first cousin. He's also a distant cousin of former NHL great Gary Sargent of the Stars and former minor leaguer Earl Sargent. He's also the father of former minor leaguers Henry Boucher Jr. and J.P. Boucher. Now, uh, again, the Dave Forbes incident, January 4th, 75, is covered in the previous podcast, and uh, the the new documentary talks uh, about that. There was some question he was going to uh, re- return, but the uh, the lawsuit and the the criminal charges were e- extremely, extremely, uh, no pun intended, a black eye in hockey for a number of years. Now, uh, Forbes could have easily killed him in the incident, but like I said, that's for the, that's for you to read the other podcast. Now, again, uh, very, very well respected by the WHA squads. He was taken by the Fighting Saints in the 72 draft. Now, the big line, of course, he played on was Red Berenson and Bill Collins from Detroit in 73. Now, he was part of the Fighting Saints, the 76th squad that uh, folded on February 27, 76. Now, uh, obviously an active supporter of Native American causes and, and charities throughout his uh, life. Now, a- a- actually, he was paired on defense at War Road with future NHL player, the very underrated Al uh, Hangsman, uh, who was basically, I think he played with Team USA as well on a number of campaigns. Now, uh, he was also part of Detroit's top penalty killing unit with Collins during the 73 season. 
He also testified before U.S. Congress in, on, in September 1980 about the problem of violence in sports. Now, of course, the, uh, the great biography, Henry Boucher, Native American Olympian, came out in 2013. Now, he also served in the U.S. Army during his first two seasons after a draft from 70 to 72. He was also a member of the Kansas City team that relocated to Colorado in July 76. He also worked as an instructor in hockey schools uh, during the, uh, the off-seasons of his playing days. Now, he was also the subject of the biography called Henry Boucher, Star of the North, which came out in 99. And, of course, he played amateur hockey with the War Road Lakers for part of the 72 campaign before the 72 Olympics. Now, uh, unfortunately, he was suspended by Minnesota several times in 75 for skipping practices and also convinced Oshie's family to move to War Road, Minnesota, so TJ could improve his game. He's also considered the 47 most important sports figure in Minnesota history. Of course, uh, true that uh, very important list was published by Minneapolis Star Tribune uh, several years ago. Now, uh, the 6 feet 195, again, uh, the website that's still being run, Henry Boucher, Dot com. Now, the, uh, the the idea of his game, it was very, very, again, uh, two-way. Very, very uh, strong. And uh, the fact is, the 1980 Olympic team owes a lot to Boucher. He broke a lot of inroads towards respecting American players. Like, uh, like in 2024, American players are sometimes more highly regarded than uh, than Canadians or Europeans because of the under you know under eighteen program the the United States program but Boucher was the one to break the barriers not only for Aboriginal players but for players from throughout the states and now uh, the, the Dave Forbes uh, incident uh, left uh, Boucher with a cracked bone around his eye and a blurred uh, vision Forbes was eventually prosecuted for aggravated assault and his trial resulted in a hung jury, and of course a lawsuit as well. Now, he never really fully recovered from the injury. He attempted to come back with the Fighting Saints in 76, and then uh, returned to the NHL with the Scouts in 76. Now, uh, he only played, of course, nine games for Colorado. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, he did fall into hard times unexpectedly uh, because of his early retirement from hockey. His agent was uh, negotiating at the time a four-year contract with the North Stars, but the talks were never completed due to the injury. He went through a period of divorce and drug and alcohol problems before straightening out his life in the 1980s. He reestablished himself in the Indian community and again became the very determined and very respected man uh, that uh, he was for uh, the last 30-some years of his life. Unfortunately, he passed away on September 18, 2023, at the age of uh, 72, and like I said, a very, very uh, instrumental player in saying, listen, this is this is something tremendous that uh, we can look to Henry. Now, he is, uh, his time at uh, War Road, again, the four seasons between 66 and 69, uh, he played with Winnipeg Jets of the WCHL, again, 53 points. First season with the Red Wings, only one goal in 16 contests, but second campaign, 14 goals in 73 games. Uh, with Detroit in 74, 19 goals in 70 games. 75 with the North Stars, 29 points in 51 games. In 76, uh, he split time between the Fighting Saints and Kansas City, 19 goals in uh, 64 games. And the last time with Colorado, uh, two assists in nine games. So he played with Team USA, 70, 71, and uh, 72. And of course, inducted in the United States, Hockey Hall of Fame, well-deserved, in 1995. So, uh, U.S. Uh, Olympic and World Championship squads, 13 goals, 6 assists for 19 points in 23 games with uh, the best campaign, 71 with uh, 7 goals and assists for 8 points in uh, uh, 10 contests. So, it's, uh, it's a tremendous career, but like I said, uh, the, the Forbes incident, uh, Forbes was never considered what he called a chronically dirty player. We're not talking Will Paymont here. We're not talking about, you know, the Hunters or whatever. But that was just cruel what they did to him. And for uh, for what reason? Because 
uh, no uh, no offense, uh, Henry was not a pl player that was uh, looking to be dirty. Uh, he was just basically playing his game. And uh, just to go over this a little bit, just to give you a little bit of uh, context, and you can see the documentary uh, for for yourself. Uh, the uh, it was late in the first period of Minnesota's eight nothing home loss to Boston. Again, he was a vicious attack by Forbes, who jammed the butt end of his stick directly in the area above Boucher's right eye. The brutal attack opened up a gash on Boucher's face that need, needed 30 stitches just to close. The incident was related to some bad blood between the players that had developed early in the period. Uh, there was a fight between Boucher and Forbes in the first period, and they both got seven minutes in penalties. And ironically, Forbes' Boston teammate Terry O'Reilly and also jumped into the fight and was tossed in the game for joining in. Now, just after 60 minutes in the, uh, into the period, Boucher and Forbes exited the penalty box at the same moment, and as soon as he came out of the boxes, Forbes tried to go with Boucher in a second fight. Boucher would not take him on, so Forbes, holding his stick in his right hand, reached around to punch Boucher and caught the side of Boucher's face with a butt in the stick right in his glove. Now, Boucher, who did not see the stick coming, fell to the ice, then Forbes then jumped on him and began punching the defense of Boucher until the linesman separated the players. Now, uh, the legal case and the civil case uh, should have been more in favor of Boucher, but uh, uh, it, was, uh, it, it was what it is. Now, ironically, his trade, uh, trades through the years were quite uh, interesting. He was traded by Detroit to Minnesota for Danny Grant on August 27, 74. He then uh, signed a WHA contract with the Fighting Saints in June 75, and he was uh, NHL rights were traded by Minnesota to Kansas City in 75 for a 78 second round draft pick, which ended up being Olympian Steve Kristoff. Now, when he agreed in principle to the NHL contract with Kansas City in 76, he eventually left the Minnesota team to join KC and was suspended without pay by Minnesota. Now, on February 6, 76, he was released by the Fighting Saints. In February 7th, he signed an initial contract with Kansas City. And of course, after the incident, he was suspended by pay by Colorado for the remainder of the season due to ongoing problems with his vision. So, uh, final initial totals, uh, 247 games, 53 goals, 102 points. But like I said, a, a good 15 to 20 point guy. But just moronic that... Forbes would think that Boucher was a player that needed his ire. And there were some published reports that his authenticity, his Aboriginal authenticity, was a factor. And that's that's for the people around the ice at the time to comment. But the whole team, Boston, should have got a major suspension. And there was no formal apology against uh, for Boucher. And uh, the Minnesota-Boston rivalry, I think, had a big do it. I know it sounds weird. California Golden Seals had a bad rivalry with the Flyers for years, but Minnesota and Boston did not get along at all, at all, at all. That was the, the first in uh, uh, several major incidents involving Minnesota teams or Minnesota players with the Boston Bruins. I don't know exactly why, but that's the parallel. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here with our uh, NHL uh, uh, podcast and especially our Aboriginal podcast, let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share.